Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Lee. I'm the founder and the CEO of PBS Biotech. It is my pleasure that I can present in our technology and product to you today. Um, the, with this uh, uh, the unprecedented and amazing uh, potential to cure the unmet needs that cell therapy industry has grown tremendously during last decade. And the, while the medical benefit is amazing, and, and unless we figure out how to uh, uh, mass produce this noble product and in the safe manner, and then that this medicine cannot reach to the patient. So I think uh, uh, one of the big challenges that we need to deal with is uh, how are we going to really manufacturing efficient and then safe, and that's what we're going to focus on. So the, at PBS Biotech, we uh, recognize those challenges and a potential uh, bottleneck of this commercial scale manufacturing. So the, our goal is to provide the, the scalable manufacturing platform to, um, uh, along with the unsurpassed the, the process expertise and uh, process know-hows, to you know, open up those challenges, and especially for the allogeneic cell uh, the, uh, applications. So if there are three different kinds of cell type, human cell type, the based on their culture, um, uh, the method, the base, and especially in suspension mode. So as you can see, the first class is like a prepotent stem cell. They grow as a cell aggregate. And then in the second class is like a human primary cells, and then including MSCs and exosome production as a chondrocyte, they can grow on the surface of microcarriers, and those are going to be suspended in the bioreactor. The third class is uh, immune cells, like the T cells and NK cells. Those are isolated from the blood, they are growing it as a single cell suspension. There's, therefore, they are somewhat different than this type of uh, large size of uh, particles. And then bioreactor-based uh, uh, manufacturing process has been well developed for uh, biotech industry during the last you know, two, 20, 30 years. So it's a natural assumption that, well, we can use the same technology for cell therapy uh, manufacturing. However, there are significant difference between therapeutic protein expression versus the, the growing the human cells. Because number one, the live, living, live cell itself is the product for cell therapy. So we need to preserve the viability and integrity of the cell. And then the 2D culture is most commonly used in early stage clinical, but for there's many publications came out and then showing that it is not viable option for commercial scale manufacturing and especially through the scale out of those. That's the reason why alternative option is well recognized a single user bioreactor system that can improve the volumetry productivity of those cells. As a, this human cell is isolated from the human organ, they're anchorage dependent. It's not single cell you know, uh, adapted, anything like this Cho cell that has been adapted for as a host cell. So because of anchor dependent, then as I mentioned, they can grow either as a microcarriers on the surface or growing as a cell aggregate. Because of those the microcarriers, the cell aggregates is 20, 200 to about 400 micron diameter as a much bigger particles compared to the single cells. Therefore, if you know to suspend those in a uniformly in the bioreactors, you have to uh, provide the more power input through the high agitation rate. And as we're doing so, there's going to be potentially, you know, create a, a hydrodynamic environment that can uh, shear sensitive cells by damaging the cell viability. So, so that itself is a challenge. However, those kind of micro uh, hydrodynamic environment, the small scale is relatively easy to manage. The real challenge is coming from when you increase the size of a vessel, and then how are you going to maintain those microscopic uh, hydrodynamic condition from the small scale to the manufacturing scale? That is going to be a real challenge. So at the PBS Biotech, we uh, have our uh, patented vertical wheel uh, you know, technology, as you can see in the video. And then along with the U-shape of the vessel, the vertical wheel is rotated to create the three different types of fluid, the fluid pattern. There's a radial flow, axial flow, and the tangential flow. 
And then a transition flow with a U shape will have a great advantage of suspending particles from the bottom and then resuspending the top. So we can see to the far right over there is a slow motion showing that microcarrier size of a fluorescent particles, when we're mixing it and how well they dispersed and then homogeneous uh, distribution uh, uh, by the, uh, uh, the energy dispersion rate uh, around the all uh, inside the vessel. So another advantage is as we scale up and a vertical technology allow us to maintain those kind of hydrodynamic condition and when we scale up to the size of uh, the bioreactors. Oh, I can see here. So the, this slide shows that the family of our uh, single-use bioreactor equipment on the left-hand side showing that uh, R&D uh, scale of a 0.1 liter, 0.5 liter PBS mini, and then from 3 liter, 15 liter, 80 liter as a fully integrated controller system, and, and that has a single use. And then we also in the uh, process of developing 400 liter in the near future. So not only the, the PBS Biotech is offering this um, innovative uh, single use bioreactor equipment, we also provide the R&D process development ser uh, services. The why, because uh, we, when we start working with the cell therapy uh, development uh, customers, their expertise moves around the cell biology, not necessarily chemical engineering, how to deal with the hydrodynamics. So we're trying to help them, and then actually it has been worked as a very uh, productive win-win situation. So I want to share a couple of the data, the examples. This is showing the mycenchyma stem cell growing in the surface of the microcarriers. On the left-hand side is a clonal isolated MSC from uh, cord blood, and then as a SCM, then if you can see the 0.5 liter, 3 liter, 15 liter, that the growth pattern uh, is a very consistent and then a reproducibly reached to the uh, 800,000 cells per mil in the five to six days. The right hand side in the partnership with the Rooster Bio, and the they scale up from 0.1 liter uh, and uh, 30 liter, 15 liter, and 50 liter, uh, they are all to consistently grow more than half a million cells per mil in all of both of them in the xenofreak uh, media condition. And then an, another cell type that I mentioned earlier is a, a pluripotent stem cell. That they're very unique and is another important criteria to, to uh, achieve in the bioreactor process to expand the cell is that the uh, morphology of a cell aggregate, the size of aggregate is very important, especially you have a uniform distribution, because the goal of this pluripotent stem cell is not only expand the cell, but you need to differentiate it to your target cells. In order to do that during these different growth factors, the diffusion rate through the same size of a, a cell aggregate it will yield, and then the quality of product is very important based on the uniform size of distribution. So this graph is showing the comparison between vertical wheel versus a horizontal a conventional stir type of wheel and a various agitation speed. And then aggregate size is inversely uh, correlate, uh, proportional to the uh, shear stress level. So higher shear stress environment, the aggregate size is getting small and then is a low uh, stress level, they have a bigger. So 40 RPM is relatively big and the 80 RPM is a definitely is a smaller. However, that the size of distribution within that given agitation speed is relatively consistent, whereas a, a horizontal impeller, the size of distribution is a very wide flat bell curve distribution. So based on this kind of a growth character, uh, uh, the pattern that we can actually propose this manufacturing process starting from the cell bank, frozen cell bank, and then go through the CD expansion stage using early stage 2D and 3D, and then use uh, the 80 liter for the production stage, in which take about 20 days process. Once the cell reaches a certain uh, uh, target concentration, then you can switch the media and start this uh, differentiation process which should take about 14 to 30 days, depending on your target cell, how many medium exchange you have to go through. So if you look at the, uh, the total number, starting with the 1.2 million cells, and at the 80 liter with the 50 liter working volume, you can end up with the 50 billion cells. That's about 40,000 fold expansion. 
that is possible for IPSC in suspension mode in the bioreactor. So now I'm going to share the, some of the application, uh, what we can do with this kind of pluripotent stem cell. Uh, this is uh, uh, disclosed by the, the SEMA Therapeutics. They're developing the better eyeless cells for Taiwan uh, diabetes treatment. The Taiwan pa uh, uh, diabetes patient in the U.S. is more than one million uh, patients, and they are continue to grow. And unfortunately, most of the patients are our children. And then they have a lot of the side effect with the injection of the insulin. So their idea is growing this pluripotent stem cell in the large scale in the bioreactor and then uh, differentiate into the better eyeless cell. And then in their case, is an uh, immunoprotective device and then uh, transplant in the uh, patient so that based on the glucose level in the blood, and then those... Uh, engineer the beta cell can release the insulin to their patient body and then respond to the glucose level. Another example, now uh, we about to uh, initiate the collaboration project with the um, Army and the Organo Met Bio. They're trying to use autologous cell therapy application that the patient uh, uh, drive the stem cell and then expand it in the bioreactor and then differentiate in the cardiomyocyte. And then they have this kind of a scaffold of a, the pig heart as a ghost heart, and then a covering with your own cell driven uh, uh, cardiomyocyte, and then end up with a uh, bioengineered uh, your autologous heart. So this type of approach, of course, the cardiomyocyte itself can be used for the heart disease uh, the treatment after surgery and so on. But this is only one of the examples of what we can do for this kind of uh, uh, application which required a large number of uh, uh, prepotent stem cell. Next slide is showing that some selected our customers and collaborators and both the prepotent stem cell area and then as well as uh, human uh, primary cells. And then on, uh, the, during the last couple of years, uh, we published the peer review uh, uh, in the peer review journal and then including the, uh, the larger scale expansion of uh, prepotent stem cell in our vertical wheel bioreactors, uh, or one of them is also uh, generating the cell-derived cerebral organoid, which is neuron cells derived from IPSC in dynamic mode in the vertical wheel uh, bioreactor, and then also CFD characterization of this vertical wheel system and how we can really scale that up. And then, uh, uh, microcarrier-based MSC expansion, and then, you know, uh, one of this review uh, by, uh, that I wrote is about challenges, solutions of commercial-scale manufacturing for allergenic prepotent stem cells. As our customers is really entering the clinical study and then a number of uh, customers increase, we have a very strategic goals. So not only that the, the, the technology works in the R&D lab, but it's very important for us to provide the robust and reliable product with the GMP qualification in order to support their clinical phase uh, manufacturing. So uh, we are in the process of actively working on the GMP qualification of our, our uh, uh, product. And also internally, we improve our operation to, in order to secure the supply chain and then improve the manufacturing efficiency as well as the quality, the highest quality of the product. And then we develop a new product, as I mentioned, and not only the largest size of bioreactors, but also supporting device to help uh, uh, the running the large size, large size of bioreactors, and we keep adding our patents around that too. So recently we moved to the new facility, which is 64,000 square feet, uh, we moved that uh, last year in October and I have a, a new uh, single user product assembly cooling room as well as a bioreactor electromechanical assembly room. And as I mentioned, we have an internal bio lab that we can develop the uh, manufacturing process for client. So uh, this last slide is showing that the executive team, myself, as well as recently, one year ago, we uh, hired Nelson Bermunez as a COO. He used to work in an Amgen in operation for 25 years. And then Mark Schneider is our VP of Finance and uh, Corporate Controller. He used to also work in an Amgen. Joe Petrosky is a VP of Global Sales. Work, used to work in a Millipore and a Charter Medical as a disposable product 
provider in the, uh, the past. So with this team and myself, uh, we are very excited about this opportunity and to provide the solution to this emerging cell therapy industry. And we are looking forward to serving your manufacturing needs. Thank you very much for your attention. And I think we have a zero seconds so and no questions. Thank you.